Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So on this episode, we're going to be discussing tax deductions related to business retreats and live events. I think in the past year or so, I've just seen this complete spike in live events and retreats and experiences. And it's amazing. I love seeing all of this. And more and more people are asking me questions like, hey, I'm going to a retreat next week or I'm hosting an event. What the hell can I deduct? So I wanted to cover some key deductions that both event hosts can take as well as attendees of these events and retreats. So if you're planning to attend or host a business retreat or live event, then this episode is for you. So grab a pen and paper and let's dive in. So first, if you're planning on hosting or attending an event and leveraging these business expenses for deductions, then here's the thing. You need to make sure that this event or this retreat has a business purpose. Okay, anytime the IRS asks about these types of events, they always question whether this was simply entertainment or if there was actually a clear business purpose. Make sure you save agendas, schedules, training materials, photos showing you were there. And they they all have to demonstrate a sort of clear business purpose to these events. And a business purpose can be, you know, networking for business contacts. It can be attending an industry event to meet other professionals. It can be education. It can be training. It can be sort of team development, right? And professional development. There's a whole lot of stuff that you can use, but you have to make sure that you're really clear on the business case and that you're obtaining evidence and artifacts to support that. So that being said, assuming that there is a very clear business purpose to this event, let's go into what you can actually deduct as a host if you are planning on hosting an event or a retreat. So number one, any sort of venue. You can deduct the cost of renting a venue where the event takes place along with any other costs that are coming along with that. Uh, They usually like to tack on other fees for, let's say, catering or to have certain things in the rooms or to assemble the room, uh, disassemble the room, whatever that may look like. Your cost of a venue are definitely going to be a deduction if you're an event host. uh, And no question. And that also goes along with decor. So if you purchase specific decor, brand signage for the event, that would also be considered a deduction. Um, This just came to mind too, like even additional fees for cleaning or for service, for actual labor, um, anything else that, that needs to be part of the experience is probably a deduction as well. And then we get into planning services, services to plan and coordinate the event. This is, you know, a professional or think of like a wedding planner or someone like that. Someone who can actually be walking around with a little headset, right? (laughs) And like managing the flow of the event, the flow of the day, making sure we're keeping time, stuff like that. That is definitely someone who would be uh, a a deductible expense to you. Uh, They're invaluable to that experience. And then also promotion. Think about marketing costs. Think about um, if this is a revenue generating opportunity for you, then 100% marketing costs in order to drive traffic to buy tickets is a huge thing or to enroll. Um, You want to be looking at not just the paid advertisements or social media ads, but also like what are you doing to promote the event? Are you traveling to speak? Are you specifically um, attending certain other events? Are you you know, getting in front of your ideal audience for this event and then incurring expenses to make that happen. So that's a big part of it too. Uh, Then we get into a little bit more of the details like meals, beverages. If you're providing concessions to attendees during the event, you can deduct the cost of these items as well, not to mention travel and lodging. Um, If you need to travel to your location or stay overnight, you can deduct those expenses. And this also includes, by the way, visits to the location while you're scouting for locations. So let's say you're you're hell-bent on hosting a retreat in Sedona, right? So you're going to go take a trip to Sedona 
ideally when it's great outside, right? You're going to go take a trip to Sedona and you're going to explore around. You're going to explore different retreat venues, look at the spaces, meet the people, right? Be able to walk around in person to visualize everything. That can be deductible. But here's the really big thing when it comes to scouting, because if you're going for the event, it's much more obvious that you went for that event, right? There's 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 a, a schedule, there's an event on the calendar, like it, it's a whole thing, right? Tons of evidence. But if you're just scouting different locations, make sure you've got photos, notes, brochures, things that will actually, business cards, uh, things that will show that you were meeting with people because you could easily claim the IRS is onto this, by the way. They'll they'll know that you're you're just trying to take a vacation, right? They're going to assume you're trying to take a vacation, and you're going to want to show. No, I was actually scouting locations for this upcoming retreat. And the more evidence you have, the better. You know, showing calendar meetings with people there that you were work conducting business while you were there. That's going to be huge because you're not going to have as much to show for it. You can just easily claim anyone could claim right that they were scouting locations in Orlando. In reality, they went to Disney World, right? <laughs> So you got to make sure that you can substantiate that because they're going to question it. Now we go into other fees, like let's say you're paying speakers or you're paying um, attend, uh, excuse me, paying facilitators or coaches or something to help facilitate the event or to be, I call them camp counselors. <laughs> like if you're paying folks to be at the event to help usher along, to help speak at the event. Um, or presenters or anything like that, you can deduct their fees as a business expense as well. This also includes if you're comping their hotel or you're comping their uh, airfare or you're comping any sort of meals. You can also deduct thank you gifts. I know a lot of hosts will also give gifts to their speakers to say thank you. You can deduct those thank you gifts as business gifts as well, up to $25 per person. Yes, it's only $25 per person. Yes, I agree. That is way too little. I think they really should be cranking that up based on their, they're increasing the standard deduction every year and they're increasing the mileage rate. I think that one's got to catch up with inflation. And uh, I would gladly lobby to Congress to increase that limit. But right now it's still 25 as I'm recording this. So it's really important though to keep receipts and other, other documentation of these expenses so that you can prove to the IRS that they were related to the business. Again, the business case is everything. So now let's go into a retreat attendee. So there are also several deductions you can take, albeit they're a bit simpler because it's pretty straightforward in terms of what you can deduct if you're going to an event. Now, obviously it's the registration fees. You can deduct the cost of registering for the event as a business expense. Uh, most of the time, these events have an element of education, professional development, and they can be considered a training expense. Uh, this also includes travel and lodging. If you need to travel to the event location or stay overnight, you can deduct those expenses as well. If any of this travel, by the way, is by car, you can deduct business miles at the standard mileage rate, or you can process them through your business if you have an accountable plan. Uh, and it, same thing goes if you have airfare, if you need to take a cab, anything like that. So any travel and transportation that you need to take can be deductible if you need to incur it in order to attend the event or to host it. And then of course, meals and beverages. If you purchase meals or beverages during the event or while you're traveling for it, then you can deduct those expenses as well. Most of these live events that I'm seeing are between about three days, maybe it might be an, a night on the first night, like an evening event, and then a two, and then like a whole day and then a half day. I feel like that's pretty standard, right? If you're going to some of these bigger live events and um, basically while you're there, because you're expected to travel on, let's say it's a Monday to Wednesday, you're expected to travel on Monday stay there Tuesday and leave on Wednesday, then all of these different expenses can be deductible during that time frame, right? But you have to be careful that if you're attending an event and you're staying, let's say it's uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you're staying the weekend, the weekend is not deductible. The weekend is not deductible. But here's, here's a little trick for you. And I'm going to see it in another episode that'll be coming out soon. But if you want to, what we call wrap a weekend, you could actually attend. You want to really, really hack this? Attend an event Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, stay over the weekend and make sure you have business to conduct in that city or that town on Monday. If you plan around this and you plan on staying in the city to stay for business meetings on Monday, uh, or maybe even to scout your own retreat location, wink, wink, you could, and again, work with your professional on this to really game plan your itinerary, but you could 
deduct the expenses for the weekend. That is what we call wrapping a weekend. So if you are traveling away and you have a very clear business purpose to be there on Friday and on Monday, you can stay the weekend because the IRS is like, well, we don't need you to deduct flights to and from within like a 48 hour period and go back and forth. That would be silly. So of course you can stay the weekend and that would make sense that you'd have to stay the weekend in order to accomplish that. So as I mentioned before, always consult a tax professional when it comes to this stuff, when it comes to planning an itinerary, when it comes to planning your events, your retreats, whether you are the host or the attendee, always just check in with your tax pro, let them know you're going to one of these, you're hosting one and see what they have to say. Maybe brainstorm, maybe sit down and actually go through, Hey, I'm thinking about some additional ideas for the event. Can I deduct these certain expenses or how do I maximize it? Right. And of course we want to maximize it without spending all of our money. So if you want to learn more about what makes something deductible or how to actually maximize your deductions as an entrepreneur, go pick up a copy of my tax deduction guide for entrepreneurs. We go through these as well as hundreds of other deduction ideas for you in your business and teach you what makes something deductible. So you can figure out on your own if something could or couldn't be and start asking the right questions to your professional. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could chat with me and our guests about this episode? Well, guess what? You can. Join the Keep What You Earn community now using the link below in the show notes. You can post your questions, chat with fellow business owners, and the best part, it's totally free. Oh, and by the way, it's not a Facebook group. That's right, no noisy notifications or distractions. Just what you need to get the full experience from listening to this podcast and maximizing your value. Meet us over there after the episode to get exclusive content and access to me and our guests for your questions. We'll see you over there. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.